the great father and son kailaihi masalan the great father and son kailaihi masalan kailaihi masalan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin was salatu was salam ala sayyidil anbiya wal mursalin amma ba'd فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بليز اسايت ويز مي الصلاه والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله الصلاه والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى اله واصحابك يا نور الله respected viewers of Madani Shem, we once again welcome you in our program, The Great Father and His Son. Respected viewers, we welcome you in our program, The Great Father and Son. In this program, we talk about the biography of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam. Today, in specific, we'll be talking about migration of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam. Be with us from start to end, inshallah, you'll be learning a lot today. But before we proceed towards our topic of the day, let's make a few good intentions. My Shaykh Tariqat Amir of Ahlul Sunnah, Azati Allama, Maulana, Muhammad Ilyas Attar Qadri, Rahmat Barakatuh Mun Aliya, has given us a beautiful mindset that we should make good intentions before we perform any permissible task or any good deed. As I am presenting this program, I make this intention, I will deliver this for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're watching, you can make this intention, you will watch from start to end, you'll remember what you learn, act upon and pass this knowledge on to others too. Alhamdulillah, today is the blessed day of Eid al-Adha. Eid al-Adha is the day when we perform the sunnah of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alihi salatu salam. This program is about Sayyidina Ibrahim's biography, alhamdulillah. And today, in specific, we'll be talking about migration of Sayyidina Ibrahim, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu salam, insha'Allah, azzawajal. So much to learn today about great personality, Sayyidina Ibrahim, khalilullah, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu salam. In the previous episodes, we heard that how Sayyidina Ibrahim, ala nabina wa alayhi salatu salam, compelled his nation, made them think, made them contemplate with different reasonings Dalai and proofs, uh, and he tried to convince them that they should believe in the wahdaniyat uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the people did not embrace faith due to the fear of the king. They blindly followed the way of forefathers out of ignorance and remained adamant in their disbelief and polytheism. All this was despite Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam demonstrating a miracle as a marvelous as being unharmed. All this was done even after Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alayhi salatu salam had come out of fire safe and sound. It was the miracle which was seen by those people but yet they did not believe and they remained adamant to their disbelief. Therefore Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabina wa alayhi salatu salam intended to migrate. Encouraging his family to migrate, he said, I will migrate from this place where there is disbelief to a place where my Lord Azza wa Jal commands me to go. Now he will guide me. It is stated in Quran in these words. وَقَالَ إِنِّي مُهَاجِرٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ And he, meaning Ibrahim, said, I'm immigrating to my Lord. He is the most exalted, the most wise. It is stated in another place in the Holy Quran in these words. وَقَالَ إِنِّي ذَاهِبٌ إِلَىٰ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ Translation. And he said, indeed, I'm going to my Lord, so he will guide me. So he, alayhi salam, migrated from Iraq to Asham. He was accompanied by his wife, Sayyidatuna Sarah, radiallahu ta'ala, anha, and his nephew, Prophet Lut, alayhi salam. 
respect we used to be learned from this that migrating at a time of need is the sunnah of prophets alayhim salam moving to a place where there is no hindrance in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in essence going towards Allah Almighty because he does not occupy a place and everywhere is equal for him. Thereafter, the destruction of Namrud is mentioned in the Holy Quran. Let's listen the ayahs of the Quran. أَلَمْ يَأْتِهِمْ نَبَأُ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ قَوْمِ نُوحٍ وَعَادٍ وَثَمُودَ وَقَوْمِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَأَصْحَابِ مَدْيَنَ وَالْمُؤْتَفِكَاتِ أَتَتْهُمْ رُسُلُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيَظْلِمَهُمْ وَلَكِنْ كَانُوا has news not come to them of those who preached them the nation of Nuh, Ad, Thamud, the nation of Ibrahim, the people of Madian, and the inhabitants of the overturned villages? Many messengers came to them with clear signs, so Allah did not oppress them, however, they were oppressing themselves. In this verse, the nation of Prophet Ibrahim salam, refers to Namrud and his followers. Regarding the destruction of this nation, the dominant opinion which is found in Tafasir is that Allah Almighty sent mosquitoes upon them that sucked all their blood, Allah Akbar, and ate all their flesh, such that only their skeletons remained. One of the mosquitoes went into Namrud's nostrils, caused him enduring pain and became the cause of his death. The spectacles of Madani Shani, well, this is what is written in the books. Maybe back in those days when science was not advanced, understanding uh, this could have been a bit difficult. But recently when COVID came and just because of a virus which was not seen with a naked eye, how many people they were died. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills then by the Islamic brothers, he can destroy somebody even with a mosquito or even with something which cannot be even seen with a naked eye. Now we're talking about the migration of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam uh, from Egypt to Sham. Now Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam migrated to Asham from Iraq via Egypt alongside his wife Sayyidatuna Sarah radiallahu ta'ala anha. At that time, a cruel king ruled over Egypt. One of his acts of cruelty involved forcing travelers to divorce their wives if they were beautiful so that he could take them for himself. If a husband refused to issue a divorce, he would have them killed. However, if the travelers were brother and sisters in relation, he would not take sister away from his brother. During the migration when Sayyidina Ibrahim salam and Sayyidatuna Sara ta'ala passed by this kingdom, they also faced the same treatment that others had faced. The following account is mentioned in a hadith when Prophet Ibrahim salam migrated with Sayyidatuna Sara ta'ala anha, they entered a town which was ruled by a cruel king. The king was informed that Prophet Ibrahim salam, had entered the town accompanied by a beautiful woman. Now, a message was sent to Prophet Ibrahim salam, asking him how he was related to the woman he was accompanying. He replied that she was his sister in faith. That's what he meant. He salam, came to Sayyidatuna Sarah anha, and said, Do not contradict what I have said. I have told them that you are my sister, meaning sister in faith. And I swear by Allah Azzawajal, there is no believer on this land beside you and me, meaning you are my sister because of the link through faith. 
the tyrant king summoned Sayyidatuna Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha when the king stood to advance towards her she radiallahu ta'ala anha got her performed wudu and made the following supplication after offering salah O oh Allah I have embraced faith upon you and your prophet and have only saved my chastity for my husband then do not allow this disbelieve it and empower me after this supplication the throat of king became strangulated and he started to stamp his feet in agitation Seeing him in this state, Sayyidatuna Sarawiyullahu ta'ala anha supplicated, O oh Allah, Azzawajal, if he dies, it will be said that I killed him. By virtue of this supplication, the king recovered. However, he advanced towards her again with an evil intention. So she, radiallahu ta'ala anha, got up, performed wudu, and made the following supplication after offering salah. O oh Allah, Azzawajal, if I have embraced faith in you and your prophet and have only saved my chastity for my husband then do not allow this disbeliever to empower me as a result he felt strangulated again and started to stamp his feet sayyidatuna sara radiyallahu ta'ala anha supplicated o oh allah azawajal if he dies it will be said that i killed him when the king recovered second or third time he said by allah azawajal, you have sent a rebellious jinn to me. Return her to Ibrahim and give her Ajr. Thereafter, Sayyidatuna Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha came to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and said, Do you know that Allah Almighty humiliated the disbeliever and gave us a maid? It is mentioned in another narration that when Sayyidatuna Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha arrived before the king and he tried to take hold of her. His hand became paralyzed. He said, pray for me and I shall not harm you. Sayyidatuna Sa'a radiallahu ta'ala anha prayed to Allah Almighty and his hand healed. He tried to take hold of her again but his hand became paralyzed and was stiffer than before. He again requested, pray for me and I will not harm you. Sayyidatuna Sa'a radiallahu ta'ala anha supplicated and he recovered again he then called one of his guards and said you have not brought me a human being but a jinn then he gave hajar to sayyidatuna sara radiallahu ta'ala and her as a maid when she returned safe and sound she saw that the prophet ibrahim alayhi salam was standing in salah gesturing with his hand he asked what happened to which she replied, Allah Azza wa Jal has spoiled the evil plot of the disbeliever or immoral person and has given Hajar as a maid. Although it was seemingly, apparently, contrary to reality for Ibrahim alayhi salam to refer to his wife as his sister, it was true from one perspective. By calling her his sister, Prophet Ibrahim salam meant cousin, sister or sister in Islam based on the relationship in terms of faith, which aligns with reality. Not long before Sayyidatuna Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha, Sayyidatuna Hajar had a similar experience. It is also pronounced as Hajira, but actually uh, the pronunciation which is found in books is Hajar. So that's what we are using. The king of Egypt wrongfully caught her but failed to subjugate her. Just like Sayyidatuna Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha. Allah Almighty protected her chastity too because Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha was to become the mother of Prophet Ishaq alayhi salam and Hajar was to become the mother of Prophet Ismail alayhi salam. When the king could not subjugate her, he imprisoned her in his own house. Upon witnessing the miracle of Sayyidatuna Sara radiallahu ta'ala anha, he gave her Sayyidatuna Hajra radiallahu ta'ala anha to serve her. Subhanallah. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, then a person can remain in the custody 
of the enemy of Allah, but he remains protected. Allah Akbar. Subhanallah. One day when Prophet Ibrahim salam, was in the blessed land, Allah Almighty showed him the wonders of the world in such a way that everything visible and hidden was shown to him. And no action of the creation remained concealed. The purpose of this observation was for him to have empirical certainty. It is stated in the Holy Quran as وَكَذَلِكَ نُرِي إِبْرَاهِيمَ مَلَكُوتَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ and thus we show Ibrahim the vast kingdom of the heavens and the earth so that he becomes of those who are profoundly set. Commenting on what is meant by the kingdom of the heavens and the earth, Sayyidina Abdullah the Abbas of the Allah Ta'ala and Huma said that this refers to the creation in the heavens and the earth. According to the opinion of Sayyidina Mujahid and Sayyidina Sa'id bin Jubair radiallahu ta'ala anhuma this donates the signs of the heavens and the earth whereby Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam was made to stand on the rock of Baytul Maqdis there he observed the wonders of the heavens and even saw the arsh and kursi subhanallah and his station in paradise then he observed the earth to the extent that he was the lowermost earth and witnessed all the wonders of the earth. Quranic Mufassirin have differed as to whether this observation occurred through spiritual inner sight or with the actual physical eyes. But another point to note the Prophet Ibrahim salam, was granted a great miraj ascension but our master you are and my beloved Rasul sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam Sayyiduna Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallam received a far greater miraj so much so that he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attained the lofty and unmatched station described in Surah Al-Najm in the following words. Then the vision drew closer and then even closer. So he was too bow lengths away rather near than that. So respecting views of Madan Shal, this is the migration of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam. Now Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam did not have any children when he reached the Holy Land, he supplicated in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Lord Azza wa Jal, grant me pious offspring that helps me call towards the true religion and worship you and in whom I may find comfort in foreign land. It is stated in the Holy Quran in these words. Translation from Kanzul. Irfan. Oh my Lord, grant me a pious child. So this reveals that supplicating for a pious offspring is a sunnah of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Therefore, whenever you pray to be blessed with children, pray for a pious offspring. Yes, respective of Madhani Shail, today we learned a lot about the migration of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam. And we also learned that the accounts relating the vibes of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam. And subhanallah, now we have come to the point where Sayyidina Ibrahim has made dua for a pious child. Inshallah, in upcoming episodes, we'll be talking about uh, the dua being accepted and how the glad tidings of the uh, son was given to Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam and future accounts relating Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina wa alayhi salatu salam. Respect because of Madhani Shail, what beautiful part what we learned today that whenever we make dua in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we should make dua, a comprehensive dua, not just Ya Allah Zawdil grant me a child. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you a child. But when you ask in dua, ask for a pious child, ask for a healthy child, ask for a uh, abled body, uh, healthy uh, and 
you can say pious child inshallah when you will ask zami and comprehensive dua you will get not only get a child but inshallah a pious obedient and coolness of your eyes inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant May Allah Ta'ala give us tawfiq and ability for watching Madani channel. We'll be back with future episodes. Inshallah, and we will talk more about the biography of Sayyidina Ibrahim as well as Sayyidina Ismail ala Rabina wa alayhi salatu salam. That's all for today. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Great Father and Son, alayhi wa sallam. The Great Father and Son, alayhi wa sallam.